of the next panel. Hello, my name is Aaron. I have the honor to, to announce the next panel about a very interesting topic, the challenges of wallets okay, to keep up go. with the ever-changing, the, the pace of the protocols. And we have uh, Paul Puey from Edge. Hey, come, come please. Hello, hello, I'm calling you. Yeah, this is Paul Puey. This is Joseph Tetek from Trezor. We have uh, Ivan, Ed Ivan Edelstein from Defiant, and the moderator is Leo Edouin. Thank you, Aaron. I would say you go, oh, yeah, okay, as you hear. Okay, so enjoy the panel. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Aaron. Hi, Do guys. A big round you? of applause for our panelists, please. <laughs> You know, I like this panel. I, I was talking backstage with the guys because it allows you to become Bitcoiners again, right? <laughs> I feel back to my roots here. Well, uh, you don't uh, have to cease to be a Bitcoiner. Like, uh, <laughs> when did you cease to be a Bitcoiner? I never have. There we go. Okay, guys. So, pleasure to have you here. Uh, we will be talking about the challenges of adopting Bitcoin improvements and crypto functionalities in general to different solutions that you guys have. So let's start by you guys introducing yourselves. I'll we'll start with you, Ivan. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and Defiant? Sure. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ivan. I'm from Argentina. Uh, I work at Defiant Wallet. I'm a software developer. And we are a non-custodial mobile crypto wallet uh, with focus on multi-chain and we have a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace integrated. Um, yeah, that's it. How old is Defiant? Oh my, it's a baby. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we launched production like July 2020. July 2020? Yeah. Okay, so a little over a year. Yeah, a little over a year. And what, what your user base, where is it originally? Is it Argentinian guys? Where? Yeah, we have like a lot of users from Argentina, but we have users from all around the world. We implement a uh, cash in and cash out solutions for Latin American countries. And we have uh, a few on-ramp, off-ramp uh, solutions for credit cards around the world. So people from everywhere. Amazing. Thanks. Trezor. We all know Trezor. It's my first cold wallet. Yeah. Tell us about it. Better if some people here don't know it. Yeah. So my name is Joseph. Uh, I'm a brand ambassador at Trezor. And Trezor is the original hardware wallet. Uh, the whole industry was basically invented by us, by Slush and Stick, our founders. Uh, we're from Czech Republic, but we ship worldwide. And um, like our three pillars are usability, privacy, and security. And uh, we cannot compromise on either of those. We have to offer like privacy and security features, but it has to be understandable and simple for people to use so that uh, they don't actually shoot themselves in the foot. <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. And you said something that I, I'm sure it was not casual. You said the original hardware wallet, right? Yeah. What do you mean by original? Well, it was the first one. Like uh, there were no hardware wallets bef before Trezor came up in 2013. So it's uh, the first one, the original one, that uh, like uh, came up with the whole concept of having a standalone stand device that generates your keys, keeps it secure, and is it and it's usable for people that uh, are not very technical. Let's say because uh, what Slash and Stick uh, found out when they were like talking to people about Bitcoin at first in the in the early years. It was that uh, it's easy for like Linux people to uh, set up like a, uh, like a separate laptop with with Linux and just do it properly. But uh, this is like a very niche kind of way for people to do it. So you need uh, some usable uh, device that you offer on the market for ordinary people. Like my mom can use a Trezor. It's easy for everyone. Thanks. Paul, you're a long-time LaBitcoin friend. What is this, your fourth LaBitcoin? Uh, yeah, fourth. It's been one of my absolute favorite events, and I always say to our team, make sure to spend time and put the budget away to make sure we can attend. Great event. It's always a pleasure to have you here. So probably a lot of, uh, the, a lot of the people here of the audience already know you, but please introduce yourself and Edge. Hi, everyone. I'm Paul Poy. I'm CEO and co-founder of Edge. We are a self-custody mobile application letting people buy, sell, and trade Bitcoin and dozens of other cryptocurrencies. Probably our biggest differentiator is how we do key management. 
for anyone that has ever hated onboarding people that have to write down 12 or 24 words, we abstract a lot of that complexity out and make it feel like you are just logging into a cloud-based account while st still keeping full custody and full control of your Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. So that's a big, big differentiator and a lot of people do want to do effectively acquiring of crypto. We support over 17 different payment methods all around the world um, with Latin America and Central America coming very soon um, with more than just simply credit card, but actually native bank transfers. So definitely give it a try and send us any feedback. Thank you very much. And you said something very interesting, which I want all of us to have our first question here. You said self-custody mobile app. You didn't use the word wallet. Why is that? So the term wallet is really well, ill-defined. It's not a well-defined term anymore. Um, back in the days of, you know, pre-Bitcoin, ah, here we go, this was a wallet. <laughs> and it held maybe some cash credit cards and in the old days some photos. I'm not seeing none of remember. those in yours. And, but now <laughs> crypto has turned the term into something that could be a USB stick. It could be a piece of paper with a QR code on it. It could be an app, a software application, or it could even be a bank account. Right? Coinbase has called some of their products wallets when they're fully custodial. They, they hold dollars and they're basically a bank account. So one of the challenges in our industry is kind of defining what each of these apps do so you know what you actually get when you're using them. Interesting. Would you define Joseph Tresor as a wallet? Well, uh, I agree with the idea that wallet isn't a very good uh, term for what's going on. Like the correct term should be probably like a keychain because it manages your keys. And uh, uh, the non-obvious uh, thing about hardware wallets or Bitcoin wallets is uh, Bitcoin isn't actually in the device or in the wallet. It just generates the keys. Uh, you have to write down the seed and or you can even keep it in your head so even your head can be like a wallet but uh, that's a strange idea so uh should be called keychain but here we are it's a wallet uh, marketing yeah but uh, sure it's like as we see the tools developing like our treasure suite for example uh, the, the apps do much more than just hold your keys and sign tra transactions for example we are coming uh, we will introduce CoinJoin next year, uh -huh. and this is something like, uh, it's not like a wallet kind of stuff where you just enhance privacy of your Bitcoin. Uh, it's a full stack kind of solution, and we don't have a proper term for it, probably. Interesting. And over here, Ivan, you did use the word wallet. Yeah, I did use the word wallet because we say defiant wallet is the name we've been given Ever since so for you, it's defined a wallet. Yes and no. I, I think um, every talk like this gives me something to think about and work <laughs> on it later. Uh, but I, I think I said to Paul before, um, yeah, because you say we are a wallet, and you can never stop at the wallet word. Yeah, we are a wallet that does this and that, and yeah, this, and, and you end up defining your your product like wallet is like the first thing you say that he said it's not good. And I think it's it's a really interesting thought to to work on because maybe maybe we have to help people understand what is the thing we do, and maybe we're misleading them with the word wallet. So let's work on coming up with a better new word. I think we might be setting a new industry standard here. No more wallets. Crypto some things. <laughs> Self custody solutions. Yeah. That. Self custody I like solutions. It. Okay, let, let's let's self custody over applications. Self custody applications. Mostly differentiated from those darn custodial solutions. <laughs> uh, okay, when you're working with self custody applications, right? How do you define what's your roadmap? Because I mean, possibilities are endless. I think Paul, you mentioned a couple of them. You can do payments. You can be an exchange. You can be vault. I mean. How do you, in each of your companies, take this type of decisions and what's the, the goal that you are chasing? Let's start with you, Paul. So I think a good um, background behind this question is the fact that these self-custody solutions are pure software, right? They are software, but they're able to do financial services. If you think about what we had before Bitcoin, we had financial service companies that were all custodial, and because of that, there were 
strongly limited by regulations. So by and large, one bank felt a lot like another bank. So with software, we can kind of do sky's the limit, right? We can do a whole lot of different things. It creates a whole lot of variety and also makes it where people ask us to do everything. So how do you know what you should do? Well, you need to have some definition of the product. And that's where the wallet term is really bad because you could do everything. And so um, when you approach the different products that you are using and you want to see things out of them, realize that because the sky's the limit, um, just pushing every little feature, wanting every single feature into the app you use probably isn't the, the greatest end goal for that app. You've probably used apps that do too much. That's probably the number one thing that startups have to really battle is the urge to do everything and realize you may have to just simply use different apps for different purposes. You'll have a payments focused app, you'll have an exchange focused app, maybe a vault focused application, like a really you know, hardened security application. Um, so for us, it, we know our definition or we're self custody exchange. So a lot of the features that might be more payment focused that people would push onto us, we may push back on. You know, like we get a lot of people requesting Lightning, which is an amazing, great protocol for payments. It's not ideal for you know, self custody exchange. It may become that in the future, allowing faster exchanges um, in higher volumes, um, but it's not ideal at this point. When it does become ideal, it becomes very interesting to us. Um, DeFi is very strong in enabling uh, self-custody exchange functionality. So that is gonna be a very, very important feature for us. So really that's it, it's, it's know what your product is, have an ethos and a, and, a, and a definition of that product, and then start executing on the features that enable that to be far better than what you could have built before. Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, um, and then as well as the user, this is my ask of all of you, is try to know what the definition of the products are that you're using, and um, with that understanding, you know, really push on us for what features you think will make that product definition better. Interesting. What's the ethos behind Transformin? Ash, self-custody exchange. What are yeah. you guys aiming for? For us, uh, the basic thing is security. Uh, so that users really have the ability to have their coins uh, secure. But um, our approach is, uh, like with Bitcoin, don't trust verify, and not a security through obscurity like some other uh, industrial players do, uh, because everything is open source about Trezor, the hardware, the firmware, and the software. Uh, and also the approach how we introduce uh, like new features into uh, the Trezor device and into the seat is uh, quite conservative, like with Bitcoin. Like uh, the values for Trezor are the same as the values for Bitcoin. Uh, because we have to really make sure the users understand what they are doing, what we are offering them when they buy the device and when they set it up and uh, when they write down their seat and set up the passphrase and set up the pin. And it could be, uh, it could seem quite complicated at first. So uh, we have carefully set up like the onboarding process. We have translated the suite into multiple languages so that people really understand what they are doing. Because if you do it wrong, if you, for example, forget your passphrase, you will just lose everything. And you have to understand that, that there are some risks involved if you want to be self-sovereign. You know, you mentioned something interesting. I remember when I bought my first dresser, and I got that feeling, it was like, hey, this is rather complicated, right? But when you start understanding, all of that was taken care by probably my centralized financial institution in another way, but they did it for me. It's not that the process is more complicated, it's just that now you are doing it. But the process of encrypting that was probably the same, or even more complicated. Yeah, sure. Uh, people are people are not used to uh, like handling their own finance by themselves, exactly. just by themselves. So we have to sort of uh, relearn that, and to really understand that uh, nobody can help you if you uh, like lose your seat. Okay, interesting there. So, educating self custody is a big part of your of your plan then. Self custody. Educating people. Yeah, education. Handling, yeah. yeah, definitely. It's uh, like. Uh, it's not about just selling hardware devices and uh, developing software for it. Uh, like the third sort of leg we are standing on is education and proper UX so that everybody really understands what they are doing. I love that. 
Ivan, what's Defiance goal? Yeah, so I think it's like Paul said, you, you cannot uh, give every solution for every person who wants a solution and you have to, to pay attention to what the market is asking for and what the, the crypto world is going. Um, we are a self-custodial application, I would say wallet. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, I, my my t-shirt in the back, it says uh, financial freedom for everyone. I think that's that's been our main goal since day one. Uh, we started uh, as a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace. We didn't even have the, the wallet functionalities. Um, the self-custody, you mean? The self-custody okay. thing, up, uh, functionalities, yeah. Um, and we we started growing from that. Like you, um, you do peer to peer with somebody, and we said, hey, what what if you could manage the the, the cryptos in the same place you interact with each other? So we started adding the wallet functionalities. <laughs> You're going to yeah, listen wallet. We'll, we'll get used to it. Yeah. So, um, and and then we started asking ourselves like, um, what. Well, how can we help people that first is not in the crypto uh, in the crypto space start in the crypto space and that's really difficult um, and and also how can we help people that is uh, maybe in in the CFI world uh, transition to DeFi because they they start listening like DeFi is, is interesting you have uh, your keys all the time so you can uh, be uh, sovereign of your funds and maybe bring those people to DeFi. like what do you need what you know, if you're if you're i don't know interacting with a blockchain in c that you like um but you want to go DeFi the same way maybe we can uh, help integrate that blockchain for your needs so that's the focus and and also all, all the i think fiat I hope fiat is maybe going to go away someday, and I don't know, but maybe it's going to be a, a hybrid world, yeah? And we want to help people. Um, Latin America is, is like a complex place for economy, and um, we from Argentina, we know there's a lot of uh, things to, to be kept in mind, and we, we want to help people uh, have funds that they they can hold and then they can I don't know I uh, think the long way yeah, it's hope in the end uh, yeah and mm -hmm. that's where we're going you said something interesting and I'm gonna put the three of you you're gonna be last to test and think it carefully okay Paul hypothetic scenario uh oh all right <laughs> Central American country approaches you because you have an excellent self-custody application and tells you, hey, I'd like to empower my people to be in control of their funds, to have access to exchange uh, solution in your case. Would you take the challenge? Would you say, hey, I'll help, I'll help you implement 4 million people on top of the Edge wallet? That's such a softball question, Leo. I mean, it, obviously, <laughs> yes. Absolutely, okay. yes. I'm just baiting so, you in. <laughs> um, there are going to be challenges with that, of course. And mostly the challenges are kind of outside of the space of what the software layer that we work on can kind of solve. A lot of it is at the protocol layer. You know, and and uh, some of these protocols are simply not capable of immediately onboarding 4 million people. No, I'm not, I was so, not aiming so, uh, so much yes, to do it. Uh, <laughs> no, not so much to do morning, but you know, and let's put it how it's, uh, let's, let's call it by its name. I mean, Chivo Wallet here mm. went fully custodial. And one of the reasons, and I think everyone here knows that the, the president and the government are definitely pro Bitcoin, but they make the decision they made in a great regard due to the difficulties of 4 million people in a Central American ca country handling their own keys. Mm -hmm. So do you have any solution to that or it's in certain scenarios, self-custody is not an option? What do you think? No, fundamentally, I don't think that self-custody, uh, it is an option for sure. 
I don't think people should look at self-custody as not an option because you've got 4 million people and they don't know how to handle it, or you can't educate them enough to handle it. So I've kind of, I've actually inverted my opinion on education. I think there's some aspect of education that is important, but if you look back at how we adopted the internet, did all of you have to learn how to access the internet? I accessed the internet very, like, relatively early in the mid 19, uh, 1990s. And one of my first quote unquote startups was literally going to people's houses and installing modem software on people's computers so they could access the internet. I could also teach people to do that. And I did teach people to do that. Is that how we were going to adopt the internet? Is that how we adopt the internet today? Is that how people that are born today adopt the internet when they become old enough to do so? You don't teach people everything. You teach people that are gonna enable the technology to make it such that you don't need to teach them. So maybe we teach them the why. Why Bitcoin? Why should you care? But overall, I don't think you should teach them how of Bitcoin. We should then create technology that abstracts it. And I think that is what's necessary, what we're focusing on, to onboard people onto self-custody versus something like a Chivo. Now granted though, Chivo does have an advantage because it is custodial, it can avoid a lot of, as, as I was mentioning, the protocol limitations of, of bringing in potentially thousands of transactions, right, where you don't actually have a transaction that hits on chain, you just have a database entry that changes when someone from Chivo transacts with someone else on Chivo. Now that's what I'm referring to as actual protocol challenges because when you are self-custody, you're using either true on-chain or layer two, not custodial. Yeah. That's my take, thanks. Okay, so you'll take the challenge. Absolutely take the challenge, but uh, we'll need some help from the protocols. <laughs> okay, Joseph, what did yeah, you um, mean? Can you ambition four million tracers? Sorry? Can you ambition four million tracers in people's hands? Yeah, eventually. Uh, right now it will be very hard because of the chip shortage uh, <laughs> that is of course affecting us because we are a hardware company. Uh, but <clears throat> I wouldn't like, like going top down uh, with the Bitcoin adoption, like uh, it's quite contentious what's like happening here with Chivo Wallet and with uh, like the legal tender law, uh, and rightfully so. Like uh, I'm more of a fan of like what Bitcoin Beach is doing and okay. their shared custody wallet compared to Chivo because you don't actually know uh, like who owns the keys for Chivo. Uh, how many Bitcoins there actually are, whether it's like fully uh, reserved, you know, you, you don't know that. Uh, but you can know that with uh, Bitcoin Beach Wallet because uh, uh, it's uh, actually like verifiable. Uh, so, but I totally agree with Paul, you have to start with the why and the how, and uh, you cannot abstract some things from people. You know, like you cannot extract, uh, abstract the private key aspect, the self-sovereignty aspect of that. Um, and you can allow people or let people f uh, maybe do some compromise with like smaller amounts on the Lightning wallet, like on a yeah, the on the off chain, with if it's just a few dollars. But uh, you shouldn't trust like your life or family savings uh, in some custodial solution. You need uh, proper cold storage where you hold your own keys for that. Agreed. How is Defiant going to tackle the next country? Four million users. Four million users. Um, I think uh, I'm going to go with half and half here. <laughs> half oh, Paul, okay. half Joseph. Um, the first thing, and when, when you started asking the question, I think the first word that came to my mind was education. Okay. And I think a lot of our users uh, say Defiant is school. Defiant is escuela. Because uh, I think we've helped a lot of users um, understand what's going on with their finances. And I think that's maybe the middle ground where I think we should go. Maybe uh, self-custodial solutions are complex for people who are in the traditional banking system or even not in the traditional banking system. And you cannot throw uh, I don't know, uh, 300 pages PDF to them and say, read this and then you no, no, no. download Defy and you have 12 no, no, words no, no, sure. and that's it, you're sovereign. No, um, I think you have to build up to that. So maybe um, uh, a custodial solution, I, 
uh, one of our, um, our oh my god, uh, a teammate of mine uh, gave a talk yesterday uh, or the day before about custodial versus non-custodial, right? Self-custodial. And I think the the thing was maybe the solution that you need to go from traditional finance to crypto. It's somewhere in the middle. And of course, I want to give Would you. Would that be CFI? Or are you mean something else? I don't know. Uh, maybe it depends on what are your needs. What, what do you want to do with your your money, your, your finances? Where do you put, want to put that? Um, but what I want, I want everybody to be on the self-custodial side. Not everyone has a different learning curve, and every every path is different for everybody. So we have to be there for the people that needs us to hold their hands and wait for the people that are getting there. Yeah, if I can just add something yes, to that. Please. Um, it's not like we don't have to think about like self-custody versus like third-party custody because, uh, and especially with Taproot, we are going to have like much more uh, complex transactions that will still be quite cheap and usable for people. Uh, and we can like explore like assisted custody or shared custody kind of stuff like Unchained Capital, for example, what they're doing is like assisted custody or CASA with their multi six. So I believe like in the future, um, not everyone is going to probably hold an UTXO because there is actually like a limit in Bitcoin for how many UTXOs we can have. Uh, and we are probably going to see like uh, uh, models all over the spectrum of like fully self-custodial, you hold your own UTXOs to third-party custodial, and there are going to be some shared custodial solutions in there. Interesting approach. Let's get the public involved, at least the brave ones that still are here and stayed until the end. ¿Cuántos de ustedes no tienen sus criptomonedas en una billetera donde sean dueños de sus claves. Los que no la tengan. A ver. Los que tengan en exchange y no tengan en sus propias wallets. Ninguna Uno, billetera. dos allá, tres, cuatro, cinco. Ok, so we have here six people that are holding crypto in custodial wallets. We have, oh, sorry for that. We have 40 seconds each, 40 seconds speech, why they should move to Edge. Tressor or Defiant? First thing is simply try it and see if it feels just like what you had to do to hold your funds in a custodial solution. Our goal is once again to abstract the complexity. You don't have to see the seed words. You don't have to write them down. Um, just like you'd mentioned the hybrid approach, that is effectively it. The hybrid approach we took to the internet, you don't have to type in uh, DNS, or you don't have to type in IP addresses. Keys are used to encrypt your data that goes to different websites. And that uses a shared custodial approach, right? Almost self-custody, but not quite there. But that's how we get mass adoption. So give it a try and see if you actually, if it feels much different. If it feels similar, why not hold your own money, hold your keys, control your finance, control your freedom? There you go. Joseph, 40 seconds. Why these six people should move to Dresser? Yeah, maybe it will be even shorter than that. Like, if you want to hold on to your coins uh, for several years or longer and uh, make sure that it gets, for example, inherited to your kids, uh, you cannot hold it in a custodial solution because you will lose it sooner or later. Ivan? Um, I think maybe, yeah, think what, where do you want to put your money? Um, but understand what do you need at the moment? And yeah, download the wallet, the app, um, and take a look. If you feel like it's good for you, if it feels like you can use it for your finances and you want to be the owner of your coins, uh, go for it. And if you're not feeling right about it at the moment, wait, learn, and move. Move with confidence. Be sovereign of your funds. When you, need, when you know you can uh, control that and, and move forward. Okay, remember people, if you don't hold your keys, you don't hold your Bitcoin or your cryptocurrency. Big applause for the gents here. Thanks. Thank you so much. She even kept the time. I thought I have to be the strict German guy kicking out, but you made it yourself. Thank you so much. Great. Okay, super. Very good. Thanks. Ahoy. Thanks, Paul. Okay, okay, great.